Hi, hola, thanks for joining me in another video. Estamos en España, we are in Spain. Today is an exciting day as I get to do the first international car review for the channel. Today I get to drive a popular EV option that has been around for a while. With me, I have a new Renault Zoe. First off, it's a 2021, so I don't have the newest fresh off the factory floor. But nevertheless, it's my first time driving a Renault Zoe. And if you're unfamiliar with this car, let's check it out together. Renault has recently announced its plan for the upcoming fleet. In January of 2021, Renault Group unveiled its Renault Lucian strategic plan. This is a three-phase plan that shifts focus from volume to value. For the Renault brand, that plan includes a launch of 14 vehicles by 2025, seven which will be fully electric. The Magan e-Electric is the first electric vehicle of Renault's Nouvelle Vague, or however you say that. The other EV to expect is a Renault 5, which will be launched by early 2024. This brings me back to the Renault Zoe. It has been rumored that the Renault 5 will most likely be replacing the Zoe in the near future. The Renault Zoe had its first production car in 2012 and over the years has gained the title of being Europe's top selling electric car. However, in 2021, the Zoe slipped into second place and the Tesla Model 3 became number one. So let's take a deeper look at the Renault Zoe and see what has made it such a popular choice all these years. The car I have today is a 2021 Renault Zoe with an 80 kilowatt motor. If you were to purchase a new 2022 Renault Zoe in France, it starts around 33,700 euros. That's for the base trip before incentives. Though we have a year old vehicle, not much has changed between the 2021 and the 2022. Back in 2019, the car received some major updates, some of which include a larger 52 kilowatt hour battery and the addition of more powerful motor options. The two motor options available are the 100 kilowatt or the 80 kilowatt. It has an impressive range going up to 395 kilometers. It has a DC fast charging rate of 50 kilowatts, which is available as an option to add on. And it comes with a 22 kilowatt onboard AC charger. This car has the highest AC charging rating I've ever reviewed. Pretty impressive. Interestingly, the Zoe has an air-cooled battery, but unlike the Nissan Leaf, it isn't passive air cooling. Instead, it uses the AC system to flow cool air over the battery. In 2019, the vehicle received a facelift. This redesign added fully LED headlights in a C-shape, adjustments to the bumper and additional colors to choose from. The back of the car also received some updates with new tail lights. In the front underneath the badging is the charging port. It supports both Type 2 AC and CCS fast charging. This car is pretty small. Its dimensions come in at 408.7 centimeters for overall length, 178.7 centimeters for overall width, and 156.2 centimeters in overall height. It's a bit bigger than the Honda e and the Fiat 500e. The doors in the back open with this door handle indicated by this fingerprint. So just push in and pull. Overall, the exterior changes and accents make the car look more modern and a little bit bold. It's not so bubbly shaped anymore. In the back, we have the trunk that is sized at 338 liters. Not too bad for a car as small as this. You can accommodate a good amount of items in here. Well, except for my dog Kaya. The seats don't fold all the way down flat, which kind of reminds me of the Nissan Leaf folding seats. It leaves the odd gap between the floor and the fold. Depending on your trim, your features will vary. Here I have a 10 inch screen in front of me and a seven inch touch screen display in the center. On the center screen, you have some basic functions. You can adjust some of your car settings, listen to the radio, music, and you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There aren't many seat adjustments. You have the lever here in front to move forward and back, and then a knob here on the side to adjust your seat, your backrest. However, there is nothing on the side to move your seat higher up. And as many of you know, I'm not the tallest person in the world. But in this case, I think I'm fine. This car's small enough, I have a good view. There are also some nice, simple finishing touches here on the dash and along the door as well. With higher trims, you also have the option to add the winter package. And that adds things like a heated steering wheel and heated front seats. In the center here, you have two USB ports and a 12 volt outlet. These USB ports are used for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
there is seating for five passengers. However, your backseat passengers are gonna be a little cramped. This seat is almost all the way back and this is just as much space we have here. There's a little bit more leg room here on this side because this seat is all the way forward. However, with the seat all the way forward, your back passengers will have the leg room, but then this passenger will have absolutely no leg room in the front. If you're a family size of two and don't need a larger sized car, then this EV is perfect for you. Time for a drive and it's a start stop button and we're ready to go. This CV is excellent for city driving. It does well on tight turns and it's great for maneuvering in small spaces. Here in Spain, the roads are small and narrow, so having such a small car as this is great. The car is really zippy, but it's not as fast as other EVs. Nevertheless, it's very lively and very quick to respond. I'm still able to pass cars swiftly. The car has B mode for stronger regenerative braking, and you can toggle between D and B on the shifter down here. B mode allows for one pedal driving experience, so when you let off the accelerator, the car quickly starts slowing down. You can toggle on and off eco for better efficiency. In general, visibility is pretty good. And you have safety features like lane keeping assist and parking sensors. Driving at higher speeds, it still handles very fine. However, it is quite noisy in here. As mentioned earlier, this vehicle has a 22 kilowatt AC onboard charger and the option to add 50 kilowatt DC fast charging. 50 kilowatts of charging isn't the highest, but not everyone needs it to be higher, but it would be nice. On the 50 kilowatt DC fast charger to charge from zero to 80%, it will take around one hour and five minutes. But if you only have 30 minutes, you can add up to 140 kilometers of range. A 50 kilowatt charging rate gives this car a C rating just under a one. For reference, the cars with the best charging rate achieve a C rating above a three. There is a bit to be desired from its fast charging speeds. With that 22 kilowatt onboard charger, you can recharge your car pretty quickly, even off level two charging. Let's talk about that AC charging rate for a moment. In Europe, level two chargers are more readily available and the majority of your charging is going to be done at home. Bigger numbers are typically better and having a powerful onboard charger is always nice, but not always needed. With the 22 kilowatt AC charger, it will take around two hours and 15 minutes according to the estimator on Renault's website. That two hour time is great and can come in handy if no DC charging is available. I'm currently at 18%, so I'm gonna plug in using the Tesla Supercharger network and let's see what charging rates we get. Okay, stall 3B. Okay, and we're charging. For those wondering about pricing, this was a supercharger cost per kilowatt hour. This brought my total to 22 euros. So I'm stopping the charge at 80%. So it took us around 46 minutes to go from 18% to 80%. The maximum charging rate I saw was 46 kilowatts and the charging curve looked pretty normal. With your Renault Zoe, your battery has a warranty for eight years or 160,000 kilometers. The new Renault Zoe is a simple car and very efficient. It may be too small for some and is not luxurious with all the bells and whistles, but it delivers all you need. It has great range, decent charging, and fair value. It really is a perfect city car and I can see why it's been such a popular option. Thanks for spending time with me today. Gracias por pasar tiempo conmigo hoy. Make sure to subscribe for more of the content and follow me on social media at KaiZV and Kai Tesla. Kai's my dog. And check out my website for more EV resources at kaizv.com. That's all for now, and happy charging. Adios, hasta luego.